portrait and wedding photographer from the North England, street photographer, visual storyteller, user of small cameras with prime lenses, photography mentor and workshop leader, YouTuber. Paul, did I did I miss anything here? <laughs> no, that's a, that sounds a lot. That sounds like I'm jack of all trades and master of none. <laughs> Yeah, you're quite a quite a busy man, right? Um, amazing work, you know. I discovered you through, through your photography, but exactly, you are kind of into into you know different areas, different activities. You know, uh, we are trying to connect. You were on a workshop just in the last couple of days, right? Um, yeah. What is your what's the priority here of you know in the suite of of what's 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 this place where your heart you know beats the most? I can imagine it's photography. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, for me, it's just capturing what I, you know, what kind of speaks to me and what I connect with. So I I kind of almost hate this thing where you have to be, well, right, I'm a fine art photographer or I'm a street photographer or portrait photographer. I I feel that where I want to be with it is just to photograph what it is that you know that I connect with and it just so happens that mainly mine is all monochrome photography so and and that's always been the way so so how would you define it you know when you would give it a minute a second you know to think about what is it that you actually connect with you know like what's the common denominator because exactly you're doing wedding you're doing street you're doing you know some kind of documentary work portraiture uh, is there a common denominator here, like something which you would say speaks to you? I feel as if it's just moments that are just gone, you know, moments capturing some kind of moment that you know isn't it doesn't last long, and and I think um, whether that's weddings because I do love doing weddings. It's it's not the most popular thing to talk about uh, wedding photography because. It just always sounds a bit boring. Um, but, but whenever I'm doing weddings, I, you know, I have such a good time doing weddings. And it's for me, weddings are like, it's like street photography, but nobody complains. No, well, nobody's going to ever say anything to you like, oh, why are you taking my photograph? There's no chance of that. So at a wedding, you can be completely free of any worry whatsoever of anybody, you know, saying, um, did you just take my photograph there? So which means you can, you know, tell all of the stories that you want and capture all of those moments and things, um, you know, just completely freely. So I do love doing doing weddings and uh, because of that, you know, it is a, there are lots of moments in there, but I think, yeah, definitely what I connect with is, is just, you know, like true moments that are gone in the blink of an eye. What, what came first for you, weddings or street? Or did one of those kind of, you know, inspire you to, to doing the other part? Uh, so for me, it was more kind of portrait stuff to begin with, way, way back uh, when I was, uh, you know, a lot younger and uh, started off with film. It would have started off where it was portraits were what interested me and and black and white photography has always been kind of my main thing. I I think I you know people it would be my main love uh, as, as something I guess that is the common thing here is is there usually is people in my photographs. It, there are odd ones where you know where I just feel that the human element isn't needed in in some of my photographs, mm. but. In general, there's usually some kind of human element, even if it's just something that, you know, we've left behind, something that humans have left behind. So, um, so yeah, so it was portraits, really. I did weddings to begin with because I, I think um, it's one of those things that whenever you, tr- you think, oh, well, I want to be a photographer, that you think, oh, weddings, you know, I, I could do weddings. And I think originally that's why I started to do weddings and 
you know, kind of wanted to do them in a different sort of way than everybody else. And and at that time, that was the case. You know, everything was so traditional back in the kind of the late nineties, and um, and then there was this movement forward with uh, photographers where they were taking things in a more documentary fashion, and that that was what I I loved. Mm. Um, and I still do that now. The the thing is my thing to do with all of that side of things on weddings is to keep things not to follow any trends with it and just to really kind of just try to keep things as timeless as possible because I just that I, I love that thing to do with monochrome photography where it just doesn't seem to date so you could look at a photograph that was 20 years ago and you could say well hang on a second was that taken yesterday or well, or twenty years ago, you know, because there's no there's no kind of styles that change to do with the color grading. Yeah, I you know I actually I love black and white myself, and and I tend to photograph in black and white, you know, predominantly myself. But you know, sometimes I have this moment I sit down and I start thinking. Actually, like you mentioned, uh, those black and white images they don't seem to date. You know, they're kind of timeless. But why is it? Actually, why is it? Is it because we remember those old black and white photos from, you know, decades ago and we kind of place our images in the same kind of basket? What is it about this black and white that it makes it timeless? What do you say? Um, so I think there is a certain amount of that to it, certain amount of nostalgia. Um, but at the same time, it just doesn't seem to change. Um, so like if I looked at, say... If if you look at some like Vivian Meyer's uh, work, right. and you look at some of those photographs, street photographs, apart from the what the people are wearing, and um, if you look at those photographs and then can look at something that's uh, monochrome today, it's there's not nothing's changed really um, in in the look now co- color grading. So so if you look at a color photograph from the nineteen eighties. And you look at a color photograph that's kind of you know modern now. The colors of are always changing, kind of maybe every five years or something. So the thing at the moment with color is, well, uh, that has been for a while, is everybody's trying to get that cinematic look to their color photography. They, you know, they're really kind of using that sort of color grading, and and it does it. It does look fantastic, but the the. The tricky thing with that is, is that in another ten years' time, we're going to look at that sort of thing, and we're going to say, "Oh man, that looks like that's looks like it was taken in you know two thousand yeah. and you know but, whatever." Yeah, but wait, like when we when we look at black and white image, it looks like it was taken, you know, sixty years ago, right? But somehow yeah. it, it uh, stands this test of time. All those yeah. Things. Yeah, and I think that, and that's what it is. If if something's, I guess if something's never in fashion, then it can't go out of fashion. And colors do come in and out. And and look at a color photography is more popular uh, these days than than monochrome photography. We, uh, we we are in a niche. Any of us that really uh, you know love monochrome photography and and do mainly monochrome photography. We, we we feel as if we're not because we surround ourselves with other people who are also, um, you know, into monochrome photography. But in fact, you know, out in the big wide world, yeah. color color is still uh, more popular these days. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now is it uh, you know I mentioned in the beginning you know that you use uh, you know small cameras with prime lenses. Is it is it really the case still? Are you working? You know, exclusive, exclusively using prime lenses. Uh, what's the camera of choice today? So I use two cameras really mainly at the moment, and that's the Leica Q2 monochrome, uh, which is a fixed lens camera, wide angle lens, uh, great lens on that camera, and also I use an uh, an a Leica M6 as well with film. And a wide lens on that mainly as well. I use a thirty-five millimeter lens on that. So, so they're they're both pretty wide. I'm I'm not a massive fan of of lenses that, uh, like I said, the the portrait lens of choice would be your about eighty-five millimeter lens. 
I feel that I lose connection with the subject when I use something as uh, you know uh, as close up as that. Mm -hmm. Whereas with say twenty eight millimeter, thirty five millimeter, fifty millimeter at a push, and that's kind of the the sort of focal length which I like, and it's certainly all all prime lenses. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Listen, Paul. So I have an idea here. I thought about it, you know, up front. So I I selected five images from your portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's look at some of, I mean, great, great work, really. I love your work, the black and white. I don't know if it's the Leica monochrome, the trick here, which, which is doing the trick, but I just <laughs> love <laughs> it. <laughs> I just love the look. I mean, wonderful photos, some of them really, truly stunning. And I, I also know you you print your images, right? You offer prints. I can only imagine them on paper and it's beautiful stuff. So yeah, let's look at some. I selected five photographs. You don't know which ones, right? Let's I don't know. Okay, let's start with this one. Uh, tell me, tell me about this image. What's happening? What's the story? So I, I love this photograph. To be to be honest, <laughs> to be fair, it's one of those uh, images that uh, you know. I, sometimes I can't recreate something again, and, and I, this this is one of the favorites. So this um, this project kind of all started. It's it's called um, Ocean's Heartbeat, and it's. The, I tend to kind of make characters, um, or, um, and and it, that can come from just kind of finding a prop somewhere, and then all these ideas start to, you know, come into my head. In fact, that helmet there is just behind me. Uh, oh, I've got, I've got, I've, right. I've got a light. <laughs> I've got it as as a light now. Um, and so, so my idea here was kind of. You know, it, it's to do with you know my love of of the of the sea, and uh, basically, I, I kind of wanted this, you know, this girl to be wearing this helmet and almost wearing a heart on a sleeve, sort of thing. Now, l let me tell you, this was a kind of a tricky shot to do because it was very windy, and that balloon to get that so that it was. <laughs> so that you could see that it was actually a heart was was really tricky because it was just blowing all about all over the place and um, um, and this one uh, I always meant to print this as a platinum palladium print it was always on my kind of thing to do and I think it it goes with some of my other images which um, I do another series called the Time Traveller and it really goes uh, well with that. Uh, it's, you know, it's it, uh, even though it's not part of the same series, you know, there's some of those at the sea as well. I'm really drawn to the ocean, and this idea really just, you know, it, it just came to me. But it's definitely, definitely one of my favorite, favorite shots ever. This one. Okay, wonderful. Let, let's go s straight to image number two. Let me see. Do it. Oh yes. <laughs> this is. Just beautiful. I mean, but yeah, what's the story? Tell us a, a little bit more, you know. So I think, in my mind, this is this always feels like the best, uh, the best photograph that I've ever taken. That that's what it feels like to me. It's it's kind of this pinnacle of of portrait uh, work that I've done, and I'm kind of almost always chasing something. Of, of this kind of standard whenever I'm doing portraits uh, now. So this was, and this was at a wedding, and this this is the thing, you see, uh, just because you're doing some photography at a wedding, it doesn't mean to say that you can't do your own photographs as well. It doesn't mean to say you're not, you can't do some photography for yourself at that wedding. And of course, you know, the um, the parents of, of, of this young boy look, you know, I loved having having this portrait, and this portrait has been in magazines. It it was shortlisted for Portrait of Britain. It's had a like a Master Shot Award and and lot, lots of other things. And of course, you know, they've seen this all happening uh, of, of this one photograph of of their their son. So it's been good for the for the parents of of, of this um, of this young boy. Um, and of course, he's going to grow up. You know, and it, he probably is. This is three. This is probably about three year old. So he's like three years older than this now. Um. 
So really all this was, I've seen him, he was looked really small and he was just standing in between kind of these, you know, these two bi- these two buildings. And I just, you know, like it was just seemed like magic was there. And I just kind of, you know, ran up and, 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 and said, can I take, you know, can I take your portrait? And, you know, as I kind of went in with the camera, just that look in his eyes, it's like kind of a haunting uh, a haunting look. It looks like it's from, I don't know, it's like a, a movie or something. And and it, it's just sometimes magic just happens. And yeah. and this 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 portrait is definitely one of my favorites. You you definitely caught he, here this very special moment. I feel like this just mixture. You know, he's you said what maybe five years old. I don't know six uh, here on the photo. So th- there's this mixture of this fascination still with what is actually happening you know somebody pointing a camera at me and also yeah. kind of excitement and even like proudness of being the subject it's just those emotions in the eyes just just i mean stunning moment so so nice. yeah it's uh, sometimes i look at this one and i think I, I almost can't it's funny when you look at your own work and you can appreciate your own photography i think that's you know but I can look at this photograph and I can really, you know, I, I absolutely love love it. <laughs> okay, let, let's jump to the next one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tell us what happened here. What did you notice? What's the story? So what happened here was I, I was, um, sometimes if I go out during the day, and I, you know, I want to take some some photographs. And if the light has been really flat, maybe uninteresting, sometimes what I'll do is I'll venture out on on a night, because on a night, then there's always dramatic light on a night through street lamps and things like that. So I was kind of walking around and just looked down this little this little road, and at, at this was just exactly as I saw it because um apart from obviously this is in monochrome but silhouettes even in color are very monochromatic you know it's so so I just I got so excited and ran towards this car and I I kind of just love this it's almost like a cardboard cutout mm. you know of a car so I, I had to take this photograph and and I love the way that light shining through the windows and everything. It kind of, it reminds me a little bit of, uh, there's a movie called Sin City. Mm-hmm. And um, it, it kind of reminds me of that sort of thing whenever, the, you know, whenever you've got that such white light coming through, the, through those windows. But yeah, I, I absolutely, this is another one which I still love today. It, it, it It's a fascinating moment you describe, right? And with those of, you're watching you will also know like uh, you, you you will be able to relate to it you know like it's such a ordinary scene right yeah yeah we and what makes it special is light right otherwise it would be pitch black and we yeah. react like you said you had to run there isn't it magic like we we react to what light is creating and we kind of yeah. those goosebumps in this moment oh yeah 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 so excited uh i remember yeah, and I didn't need to run to, you know, it wasn't going anywhere. Exactly. But that excitement, I'm running towards it, you know, just with these, you know, my heart going through, you know, uh, the, yeah, amazing. I, I so feel this moment of this, you know, uh, uh, heartbeat going up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Praying that the car doesn't drive away and so on, right? <laughs> or the light, yeah, or the, the light doesn't go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, wonderful. This is beautiful shot, and I love those deep blacks. So, is it the? It's a digital file, right? Digital shot, right? It is this one, yeah. So that's the Q2 monochrome. Um, in actual fact, um, there wasn't that much of an edit went on on this afterwards. It was um, it all even the raw file because the raw files from my camera are, are in monochrome, um, but. And they're usually very flat, those images, um, that you have to edit them afterwards. However, this one, it was, there wasn't much needed done, done to it, really. Maybe just a bump of contrast, you know, bringing out some of that texture on the wall. But that, that's about it, really. Wonderful. Okay, and where are we? Image number four, I guess, right? 
Yeah, love this what, as well. What's happening? What happened here? I mean, what you just noticed, what you how how you composed it is just brilliant. <laughs> and <laughs> oh, no, I know. kind of funny. They tell us, were you waiting here for the guy or or for someone coming out of nowhere or what happened? So so I'd like to say that I was being clever whenever I did this, but I, I wasn't. It was what interested me about this um in about this, you know, scene was it was the light on the pipe. So this pipe that was coming out the ground, and actually that pipe's really small, and I went really close up to that pipe, and I was, oh, yeah, I love the way the texture is on it. love the bolts and everything about it and that dramatic sky behind. Um, so that was what I was going to be taking a photograph of. But then what actually happened was um, I saw out the corner of my eye this man walking along, you know. So... And I know that is a technique, you know, that we do sometimes where we think, right, we need something else in, a, in an image. And, you know, we wait for somebody to enter the frame. But actually, in this uh, this case, I wasn't waiting for anybody. It just so happened that somebody started to walk along and then the idea came, oh, wouldn't it be good if he was, you know, there or thereabouts, kind of almost under that pipe, you know, maybe not put him right under it, but just slightly over to the right. So that's that's what happened there with that. Um, you love this shot, and look, I, I always kind of say, um, there's I've got this kind of rule of three that I look for, and it's that there's three really strong elements to an image, and this you've got the pipe, you've got the man, and you've got the you know dramatic sky, and if you take any one of those elements away. So if, say if we take the, the man away and it's just a pipe and the moody background, it's not that it's a, a bad image. It would still be a good photograph, but it just wouldn't be a great photograph. Likewise, if you took the pipe away and left the man with the background behind there, still a good photograph, but just not great. So I'm always looking for these three strong elements in a photograph. Yeah, absolutely. And you also kind of combined uh, three, also three, uh, you know, um kind of moods, you know, or kind of elements into this image. There is humor, there is drama, and there is also some kind of serenity of this, you know, open landscape and the fields. So it's playing on so many different levels when it comes to the emotions, you know, when you're looking at it. It's, yeah. It, that's great. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay, I have one more, and it's also a portrait. Yeah. Yeah, I remember this one as well. So... This was at a wedding again, and and a, a lot of portraits, uh, you know, that I, I take are at weddings, and and of course I ask these people separately, you know, because uh, I have a job to do while I'm when or when I'm at a wedding, but at the same time, you know, if I see a guest which interests me, where I just think, oh, I'd love to take their portrait, then I will, you know, go up to them and say, look, you know, can I take your portrait and you know, most of the time, well, they'll, they'll always say yes, but a lot of the time they'll kind of, you know, be saying, well, why do you want to take my portrait? And um, especially guys, you know, like they they kind of put a, a little bit of a bravado on and kind of say, oh, do I have to? Or, you know, like that sort of thing. Is it the, you know, the, the just doing you a favor by, and then, what tends to happen is is later on in the day, even though they've kind of just complained that you've been taking this portrait, later on in the day, they're saying, you couldn't send me a copy of that portrait. <laughs> you know, so right. so they wanted it really, but they're just kind of saying, uh, maybe they're a little bit embarrassed. But this guy, I mean, he just had just, just this style to him and he, he stood out amongst everybody there at that wedding. And the big glasses, you know, he looked like he was from, I guess, maybe the 1970s. It was almost like stepping right. back in time, just, you know, j just looking at him. And then, uh, you know, his skin texture and that wall behind him kind of felt similar to me, you know, like it was, like, you know. Um, uh, so, so yes, I, I, this, this, that's why I took that portrait of yeah. him because I just think he looks great. We looked at the portrait of the young boy right before, and now yeah. th this gentleman, you know, people of different age, uh, different times, you know, he lived in different times if the boy didn't live in. Uh, what makes a good portrait? What do you think? What, what's the 
what I think what are the features of a good portrait? So definitely, you know, I definitely want that connection with you know with with the with the person. Um, like I say, that's one of the reasons why I like a twenty eight millimeter lens for portraits because they've got no choice but to be connected with that with that moment that's happening with that photograph that's being taken. The twenty eight millimeter lens, when it's close up, it, it's impossible to get away from that. And I find that I connect more with the person whenever I'm, you know, whenever I'm that close. So I'll get that connection, that conversation going on, you know, with with them. So I, I just love that whenever it's almost just that eye contact, like like his and, and like the um, the young boys as well, where you can almost it's like I'm almost can read their thoughts as to you know so so that yeah. for me is the main thing but also i just i do like this thing of where people are kind of almost not of this time you know not super modern i like it where it's the the i think that's just something i'm drawn to with people yeah. if if i take and take a portrait and i think well Again, it's this whole thing of this timelessness, right? People, people really. People often talk about the idea of you know um, capturing the, the 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 real self, right? The real soul of the person, you know, on the photo. I, I always tend to think, in such cases, when the when the person is aware, right, of being photographed, it's never the person which is not being photographed right so of course yes. this layer of awareness is there and do you think um this combination of of this layer of this awareness and the person behind this layer this creates a special kind of moment right and i think this yeah. is, is the portrait not necessarily the fact i mean you you are there he is in front front of the camera so i think it's you know the good portrait portrait photographer kind of kind of can uh, extract, you know, the best possible mixture of, of those two layers? I mean, it is a complex thing, port like um, portrait. Uh, I think we always know when it, it when it does look a bit wooden looking a portrait, or we know when it's, it's not. There's something that doesn't feel right sometimes about a portrait, and I think maybe that is whenever the connection isn't there with the subject. So... Um, but whereas I think we we also know whenever we've just struck gold with a portrait, whenever you are getting at least a part of that person's true self. Mm -hmm. um, Paul, wonderful. Thank you so much. I mean, for, for those of you watching, maybe some of you, you know, are just discovering Paul's work. Uh, so I, you know, strongly recommend. I will be sharing in the description down below all the links to Paul's portfolio website, but also to Paul's own, to Paul's YouTube channel. I mean, tell us just briefly, you started a YouTube channel so some years ago. Uh, yeah. What is it all about? Uh, that's actually how we discovered you, through the YouTube channel. So guys, it's working. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the... Why Why? Is, why this urge of, of talking about your own photography and, and photography in general? So the original reason, so I, it's actually not that new, uh, not that old, my uh, YouTube channel. Um, it's m maybe, you know, just over a year really old, I think. Okay. Um, which And it's great because, I've, you know, I've got nearly 10,000 subscribers at the minute. So, the, um, but anyway, um, so I originally started that YouTube channel because I couldn't think of a way to show my photography to people big, you know, because the only way that you can show photography large to people is <clears throat> is on print because everybody's looking at these photographs on Instagram and it's all just on smartphones. And what I was doing was I was encouraging people through my Instagram to go on, you know, have a look at my YouTube channel. And I, on the first couple of episodes, I was just showing one photograph and I just, because I wanted people to look at it on their big, you know, 60-inch TVs and, you know, see these as they should be seen. 
So that was the original reason why I set that YouTube channel up. But it just kind of evolved through what people wanted from me, you know, what they wanted to see. And it's an ever-changing thing, uh, this YouTube thing. And, and I can almost never get my head around it sometimes because, you know, one time you, you'll do a few videos and everybody say that's what they want. And then the next minute, they get bored. <laughs> they get bored of that, that and want you to do something else. And um, But the more that audience grows, the more you almost feel obliged to, you know, to give them what they want. Um, so, but I, I love doing it because I love helping people. The main reason for that YouTube channel is to inspire uh, other photographers because that's that's what um that's what kind of people have been taken from it along the way is it is inspiration and that's the biggest compliment that i could possibly have from people is that i've inspired them to go out with the cameras and start you know start shooting that's that's why i do you know like the workshops and things like that and these you know uh whenever i'm kind of to, you know, in, in London and Glasgow and all this sort of stuff is because it's such a, a lovely thing to see people excited about photography. It's just, um, and and if I could be that inspiration, then I think that's that that's just amazing for me. Yeah, yeah, you definitely are. You are doing a wonderful job, you know, and, and also here today, again, doing the same. I hope many people, you know, discover you through this video and, you know, join your community, possibly some of your workshop and so on. I mean, uh, wonderful, Paul. Thank you so much. Um, we'll stay in touch. One day, I would love to have you in the magazine. It would be just beautiful. We just, yeah. you know, we just slightly, uh, you know, adjusted the, the kind of paper we are using, so the blacks are re even blacker and more. Oh, nice. So I think your images would look really great. Let's stay in touch, yeah. and hopefully, one day it will happen. We'll have you in France. Yes, yeah. right. yeah. uh, amazing. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Paul. All right, mate. Cheers.